Hi! In this video, we'll take a closer look at the customization complexity. I am Johannes, and this is Learn with Loot Locker. An understanding of assets, characters, classes and complexities are needed to follow along in this video. So if you haven't watched those, I recommend that you do that now. Link is in the description. The customization complexity can be used for assets that are similar but share different appearances. It could for example be used as a way to show other players what faction a player belongs to, skins or random variations of clothing and cosmetics. We'll now go through how to create a customization asset in the Loot Locker web console and after that we'll take a look at how to implement it in a small game example. I'm going to create a hat asset that will have three different textures, but all in the same asset. We first need to create the complexity by going to System, Context and clicking Add Context. Name our new context, click Save and select which classes that are able to use it. Next we head to Content, Assets and click Add Asset. Enter a name for a new asset and choose our newly created customization complexity. When using the customization complexity, we are presented with one new tab on our asset, the Variations tab. Without variation, a customization asset works in the same way as a generic asset, so to utilize the features of it, we must first create a new variation. So we click the Add Variation button and we are now presented with some options to customize our asset. Variation name, primary color, secondary color, images and materials. All this information will be returned with the asset whenever you get the player's equipment, loadout or similar, so how much of it that you utilize is entirely up to you and how your game is set up. You can also choose to use materials if your game engine and game supports that by clicking the add material button. That lets you set the path to a material that should be chosen for this particular variation, and if your game engine supports binding paths, we have support for that as well. You also have the possibility to set specific materials for specific game versions. There is also the possibility to add an attachment type. This can be used for extra information that you need for your material or variation, something like a value for a shader or a texture offset. For this example, I'm going to use the image feature. I want my hat to have three different textures and the player will be rewarded one of these variations at random when they press a button. To use an image for our asset, we first need to create an image type. So we head to Settings, Asset Image Types and click Add Asset Image Type. I will choose Hosted File, Loot Locker CDN. What this means is that the file will be hosted on Loot Locker servers. You can choose Local Path in Game or Self Hosted also, that lets you enter a path to the image instead, that you then can use to either get an image in game or from some other site. I'm naming my image type texture so that I can reference it easily later on. Alright, we now have our image created, so let's go back to our hat asset. Adding an image to an asset variation is as simple as clicking here or using drag and drop to drop it in. Our first hat variation is now complete. I will now repeat the process by adding two more variations and adding my other textures. Great, now our hat asset is complete. I'll now show how this can be implemented in a small game example. Here I have a trigger that is set up to reward the player with a random hat asset of the three variations that we just made. Now let's switch to Unity to see how to set this up in a game. When the player clicks this button, the trigger will reward the player with one of the random hat assets. So let's take a look at how the code to implement this looks. When the trigger returns a successful response, the asset has been added to our player's inventory. What I do in my implementation is that I add the URL for the texture when creating the inventory. So when the item is created in the inventory, I check the asset if it is tagged as having a texture. If it is, then I go through the asset variations on the asset and select the matching variation. We then set that asset variation to the link of the asset instance. Now the information about the URL for this asset sits in the inventory. So when I click the asset in the inventory, I run the function useItem. This function checks if the asset has a texture URL, and if it does, it will send with the texture URL when equipping the asset. We then equip the asset on LootLocker server with equip ID asset to default character. Now with the asset equipped on the server, I generate the visual item with the function visually equip item and send in the texture URL that we got from the item. Continuing, we create the item with a function here called generateEquipped. 
Generate Equip will set the correct mesh for the asset and see if the item has a texture. And finally here, we download the texture of the asset. So we start the coroutine fetch texture routine, which first creates a new Unity web request to the URL for the texture, waits for it to complete, and then sets that texture as the texture for our mesh. And with that we've covered customization assets. Customization can be very useful if you have a lot of similar assets in your game and you don't want to crowd your database with assets that have similar appearances. So for things that are purely visual changes, asset customizations can be very useful. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.